All right, everyone. Well, good afternoon and welcome to another Runner's High presented by Canada Running Series. Runner's High is a collection of informal conversations with key and influential members of the world and business of running. My name is Kate Van Buskirk, and once again, I am very happy to be your host for today's discussion. And also a reminder that as always, Runner's High is interactive, so you can feel free to leave your comments or questions in that Canada Running Series Facebook page comment section, and we will leave some time at the end to get to some of those. And just before we begin today, we want to remind everyone that registration is now open for the Under Armour Spring Runoff, the Banque Scotia 21 Kilometre de Montréal, and the Scotiabank Vancouver Half Marathon Virtual Races. And of course, you can head on over to canadarunningseries.com to find out what you'll get with registering and to start your training for these exciting events today. But we're getting pumped up for another upcoming virtual event starting in just a few days time, the Move Your Paws for the Polar Bear Cause starting this Saturday, February 27th. This event is a collaboration between Canada Running Series and the Toronto Zoo with the joint goals of fundraising both for the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy and of course, getting our community active and excited about another great virtual move challenge. And I know that many of you have been racking up those kilometers over the last year through all of the virtual events that have been put on, but you might be shocked to learn that polar bears are capable of traveling over 2000 kilometers in a single month. So the goal of this event is to collectively travel that far for each of the Toronto Zoo's five resident polar bears. That's a total of 10,000 kilometers in one month. And so to do this from February 27th to March 29th, we're challenging all of you to set the goal to walk, run, or roll as many kilometers as you can. And we will also be moving together towards a fundraising goal of $25,000 for the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy in support of polar bear conservation. So this virtual event is actually sold out at the moment, but whether or not you are able to nab one of those registration spots, we're about to tell you a whole lot more about not only the zoo's polar bears, but also about how everyone can work together towards conserving this incredible species. And to do that, today we're joined by Toronto Zoo polar bear keeper, Amy Goswell. Amy has been working with the polar bears at the zoo since 2014 and has been the lead keeper since 2018. Welcome, Amy, and thanks so much for being with us today. Hello. It's great to have you with us. Great to be here. So we've had such a major cold snap throughout a lot of the country over the last several weeks, and I know that at least I've been sort of channeling my inner polar bear on these frosty runs. The bears must be in their elements right now. How are they doing? They're actually loving it. So we've got lots of snow. So the bears have been rolling in the snow and kind of lying around in it. Um, but another fun thing is our main pool and our pool exhibit has actually frozen over in a few parts. So this has been an awesome um, opportunity for our bears to act like um, polar bears and they will go around breaking the ice and they're swimming underneath the ice. So it's, uh, it's pretty uh, fun to watch. And they're a pretty playful species, aren't they? Anytime I've seen videos of polar bears, it seems like they're, they sort of have a really playful element to them. Yep, like especially our three younger bears. Um, they're often, uh, the males will be wrestling with each other or um, Juno will be playing with a lot of her toys and swimming a lot. Um, Nikita and Aurora, two older ones, aren't as playful. They are 20 years old, so they're getting up there in age. Wow. Um, but they were the ones that were playing on the ice the other day. So they, they'll still be quite playful sometimes. That's great. That's a good reminder to all of us to try to channel that playful energy when we're kind of frustrated with how cold and, and dark and uh, snowy it can be out. But so maybe to start off our conversation, why don't you tell us more about your role as the lead keeper with the polar bears at the Toronto Zoo and what makes you so passionate about working with them? So our main goals as zookeepers um, is obviously to feed the animals. Um, so we're in charge of their daily diet. All of their food gets sent um, in a bin from our uh, nutrition center. And it's our job to distribute the food um, in different ways that's different for the animals every day um, and kind of make sure they get their whole daily diet and organize how often we feed them. Um, we're also responsible for cleaning up after them. So that um, cleaning their exhibits and cleaning, even cleaning the glass, picking up poop, that kind of stuff. 
Um, but other very important jobs that we do is train the bears. Um, so this is um, both mentally stimulating to them, but it's also very important for their overall welfare. So all of our bears can participate voluntarily in their own health care. Um, so like, you know, just like how everyone goes to the doctor and, you know, gets a checkup, um, we're able to get our bears to present different body parts to us. They'll show us their pads of their feet. We can look at their paws, their nails. Um, they'll open up their mouth. We can check their teeth, their gums, their tongue. Um, they will present their ears, their eyes. We have one bear right now that's, um, receiving eye drops. So she's trained to turn her head right up to the mesh. We can just put eye drops in her eyes. Um, they're also trained for um, injections. So just like your dogs and cats at home, they need to get annual vaccines. And all of this is done voluntarily and it's all um, their choice. They always have a choice to participate in training sessions and they have the choice to leave as well. Um, but we make it so positive to them that they rarely ever not participate in it. Um, and uh, it also provides valuable um, research for us. So all, all of our bears are trained to give us voluntary blood samples. So they'll hold their paw through a port and we can take blood voluntarily through their um, veins on their paw. This allows us to make sure they're nice and healthy so we can do um, annual checks on their blood, but it's also very important for research. So um, any blood sample that we get that we can share with other facilities or scientists, this, is very valuable information because this is blood from a polar bear that's awake and calm and relaxed versus any wild bear samples. Um, a lot of times, you know, a bear will be running the wild, and the adrenaline will be high, their glucose will be high, and a scientist would need to um, anesthetize them to get blood samples. So these aren't actual true values of what a calm, relaxed polar bear is. And that's um, something that we can provide for research purposes. Um, the other main role for, as us as zookeepers is to educate. So we educate the public all about polar bears in general, as well as climate change, because they are a major ambassador for climate change. Wow, that's a lot of great information, Amy. <laughs> Thanks. I, and that's great. I was going to start to ask you a couple of those questions. You know, I think that one of the big things that's so important for folks to understand is why the polar bear habitat at places like the Toronto Zoo is so important. And you've started to go into some of that. But maybe you could tell us a bit more about why conservation of this species is so important right now and what some of the biggest threats to the polar bear habitats are in Canada and around the world. So currently there's um, about 20 to 25,000 polar bears in the wild. 60% um, of that is um, from here, Canada. So they are Canada's iconic species, um, but their actual status is considered vulnerable or threatened. Um, they used to be least concern, but they got moved in 2006. And that is because of um, the modeling of the sea ice um, kind of changing and with um, the climate change and everything. So on average, I think the planet's increasing two degrees Celsius each year. This is causing the sea ice to form a lot later in the year and melt a lot earlier. And this is actually lowering the window of opportunity for the bears to go out and um, hunt on. So the sea ice is very important for polar bears. They um, are actually very lazy hunters. So the way they mainly hunt um, seals, which is their number one diet, is they will find holes in the ice and these holes are used by seals to breathe. And they'll just lie by these holes for hours and hours and wait for a seal to pop up. And then that's when they ambush and catch that seal. So if all of a sudden all the sea ice was gone, they, they wouldn't really be able to catch a seal. Like seals are faster swimmers. Um, polar bears can be fast running, but they um, overheat very easily. And the amount of energy it would take a polar bear, let's say, to chase down an elk. By the time they caught that elk and ate that elk, the, um, the nutrition they'd get from it would not be worth their efforts on kind of catching that bear or that elk, sorry. <laughs> um, so with the, that's why the, they're considered threatened because if all of a sudden the sea ice was gone, then they'd be gone. So even though their numbers are quite good right now, um, they could go from 20,000 to like a lot lower really quickly as soon as the sea ice was gone. And I think they estimate about a 30% drop in their population over the next 45 years based on the way climate change is going. 
Wow, those are some scary stats, pretty sobering yeah. information. Um, you know, we're, we're sort of inundated with information, I think, in this day and age about climate change, but it's maybe a little different when you can actually attach that to a specific species and hear about some of the things you've just described about what that means in terms of threats to their habitat and to their, um, their food sources and things like that. So, of course, as we mentioned, with the goal with the Move Your Paws for the polar bear cause this year is to virtually move each of the five resident bears at the Toronto Zoo, a total of uh, 2,000 kilometers each. And to help really motivate people to do that and to continue engaging with conservation efforts around the bears, I think it would be helpful for them to maybe get acquainted a little bit more with the bears that you actually have at your location. Um, and you had mentioned their, them by name earlier, but maybe you could uh, refresh us on the names of the bears and tell us more about uh, the, the bear residents that are currently at the Toronto Zoo. Sure. Um, so our two oldest bears are twin sisters. Their names are Aurora and Nikita. Um, we don't have an exact birth date from them because they were actually found as orphan cubs in the wild about um, when they were four months old. And this was in 2000. So we always say December 2000 is their birthday. And that's when they turned 20. Um, they're actually native to Ontario. They were found at the uh, polar, bear, um, polar Bear Provincial Park, which is the very southern part of the Hudson's Bay um, area. And then our other three bears are all offspring of Aurora. Um, so she's the mother. Their father is um, currently in Cochrane, Ontario at um, Polar Bear Habitat. And his name's Anukshuk. And then the three kids that we have are, we got Hudson, who's nine years old, then Humphrey, who's seven, and our youngest, Juno, who's five. And she's actually an honorary corporal with the Canadian military. And that's what she had her name, Juno. She was born on the so how did that happen? What what did what does that look like to be an honorary corporal? Um, so yeah, she was like deemed that um, because she was born on Remembrance Day, and that's where she got her name Juno. Um, so yeah, the we have a kind of a tie with the Canadian military. So um, she's like an ambassador for them, and mm -hmm. she's um, gone up a few ranks. So because she just turned five, um, yeah, a corporal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's quite an honor to be bestowed on a bear. Yeah. <laughs> so you had mentioned that um, that two of the bears, Aurora and Nikita, were were orphaned uh, pups or cubs. But um, you also we had talked a little bit about uh, earlier about the migration or the journey to Churchill. Can you tell us what that is and what that's looked like in terms of the lives of these other bears? Yep. So our three youngest bears have all gone to Assiniboine, which is in. Um, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and um, they've all spent about uh, two years or so there. Um, it's been a great opportunity for our bears because unfortunately all three of them were single cubs and they all had to be hand raised due to the fact that their mother Aurora wasn't producing uh, milk. So they kind of got raised by humans um, and didn't really get that interaction with other bears. So with um, Assiniboine, they actually do a lot of rescuing of wild cubs from um, Winnipeg, um, mostly from Churchill. And so all of our bears have got to go to this facility and um, interact with other bears and learn what it's like to be with other bears. So it was a great opportunity for all of our bears. And how long did they spend there? Um, it was about two years each, I think. Um, Hudson was actually the first bear there, um, the new facility. So he kind of got to um, be the guinea pig and explore the facility. Um, and then that's when they started getting um, wild cubs. They were on average getting two each year um, mm -hmm. and rescuing them. Um, they came, the boys came back just before I think Juno went there. Um, so yeah, at one point we had all five and then Juno went um, for about two years or so, got to be introduced to other bears before coming back to us. And I actually got to um, go with Juno to Assiniboine when she first went, which was a really amazing experience for me. Wow, yeah, it must be neat to be part of that journey with these huge animals and see kind of mm -hmm. their development and their progress. That's awesome. Um, so you had mentioned that a lot of the work that you do at the zoo is around researching and collecting, you know, uh, blood samples and data and things like that. But maybe you could tell us what else is sort of part of the daily lives of the bears that are in residence there? What does sort of a, a typical day look like for them? 
So every day we try to make completely different for them. Um, we just like as humans, we don't want to do the same thing over and over again. Um, so the best we can do is, is provide them with different things every day. We are fortunate to have three different exhibits here at the zoo. So with having three groups of bears currently, so the Aurora and Nikita are together, Humphrey and Hudson are together, and Juno's by herself with the potential of being increased, uh, introduced to Aurora and Nikita soon. Um, but right now each bear will be in a different exhibit. And then we have the ability to shuffle them from one exhibit to the next. So if that means, depending on what our shifts are like, because they change in the summer, but sometimes we'll just change them one exhibit each day. So every day and they're in a different spot. Sometimes in the summer we'll do twice a day so that they can go in the different areas. Um, the exhibits are very different from each other. The grass exhibit is mostly a grass area with a smaller pool. We have the pool exhibit that has the large pool um, and then the maternity exhibit, which is a little bit smaller. It also has a small pool, which some of the bears seem to prefer even going in the small pool. Um, so each day they get to go in a different area. We also provide them with different enrichment every day. So enrichment is really important um, for us provider animals because it provides mental stimulation, activity for them, um, promotes natural behaviors for them. Um, it's also really awesome for you know, keepers or um, people to see and watch them interact with stuff. So every day we give them something different, whether that's um, different toys to play with, puzzle feeders, just even giving like jugs with their food in that they can manipulate around, um, different scents. So we will get them old bison fur or caribou antlers, even moose poop as well for them to smell, um, different scents, perfumes. Um, different tactile stuff. So we will we'll give them showers sometimes, um, old street sweepers that they can rub against and scratch upon, um, all sorts of different stuff. So every day is something different that we can provide to them that they can interact with. Um, one thing that we gave them recently, we made them a pouncer toy using old fire hose and a big tractor tire. And this made, got the bears to like jump on it, kind of like a little trampoline, but this kind of simulated that natural pouncing behavior that they do in the wild to break the ice. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, the ice freezing on, on our top of our pool. So that was kind of like a natural enrichment that's always provided. Luckily we're in Canada, they get to experience all the seasons just like they would in the wild. Um, like I said, Aurora and Nikita are from Ontario. So naturally they experience summer, spring, winter and fall. So with our bears being outside, every single day of the year, they get to naturally experience all the different weather that um, Toronto has to offer. Hmm. Well, that's so exciting. So much to, to learn about these animals. And it sounds like you're really doing a great job of stimulating a lot of things that would sort of be similar to what they would experience in the wild. And I should have mentioned when we were talking about uh, earlier about the, the five bears that you have, um, primarily Hudson, he is actually featured on this year's finishers medal. And um, I understand that he's a bit of a fan favorite and that's how he got selected to be on the medal. <laughs> what, what makes him so special? Um, so he was hand raised. Um, he was our first hand raised bear here. Um, so I think he's like everyone kind of got attached to him that way. Um, but he is very personable <laughs> for a bear. He really does love people. Um, often when he come visit us at the zoo, he will be right up by the glass checking people out. Um, one of his favorite things to do is just go get a stick and just he'll find the biggest stick and he'll just go plop himself right in front of people and just kind of chew on that stick. Um, so I think a lot of people get that connection with him um, because he is so personable. And I know that we don't have, unfortunately, a, an image of this year's medal to hold up, but I know that you have last year's finisher's medal. Maybe you can hold that up for everyone and we can take a look at it nice and close to the camera. Very nice, move your paws, beautiful with that outline of the bear. Gorgeous. And of course this year, the finisher's medal does feature Hudson the bear and you can go over to canadarunningseries.com and uh, check out all of the swag that you'll get for participating in this year's virtual event. So Amy, we've, we've covered a bit of this, but um, you know, at Canada Running Series, we had a great chat with the Toronto Zoo CEO, CEO Dolph DeYoung back in August about the Oasis Zoo run at the time. And one of the things that he and I talked about then was um, the importance of dispelling some of the stereotypes or myths 
about zoos like the Toronto Zoo. Um, and some of those myths, I think, have been sort of popularized through shows like Tiger King and other things like that in the media. Um, and so you had, you had mentioned that there is a real research element and that you do the best you can to sort of replicate the, the typical situation of the bears um, as they would be in the wild. Are there any other, is there anything else you'd like to say about maybe distancing the Toronto Zoo from some of those stereotypes that are more negative about zoos in general that we might see in, in places like um, the Southern US with, uh, with Tiger King and, and things like that? I think the main thing is to look, if you're going to be visiting any facility, is um, making sure they're an accredited facility. So um, we are part of the AZA as well as um, CASA, which is the Canadian version of um, AZA. And that just means the facility that meets certain standards of um, animal care and welfare for the animals. So I think um, making sure you visit an accredited facility um, means that your, your money is going towards not only looking after those animals, but a lot of conservation efforts and research that is very important um, for different species. Right, and it sounds like, again, one of the, one of the big differences would be that some of those other uh, maybe non-accredited zoos are really primarily for entertainment, whereas your efforts are really conservation and research-based and educational. Yes, those are our main goals here. That's great. So as we mentioned, the goal of this year's virtual event is to raise $25,000 for the polar bears through the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy. And in fact, last year, we all came very close to achieving that goal. But so far in 2021, we're ahead of where we were last year, which is great. And maybe just before we share those numbers, Amy, can you tell us more about the uh, Wildlife Conservancy and what its primary missions are and where these fundraising dollars go? Uh, yeah, so the Conservancy's main mission is to provide um, financial resources to the Toronto Zoo. Um, so they do all sorts of different fundraising um, and any money for like this coming from the, the run this year is going to go to um, either looking after the bears, conservation and research. Um, so in the past, different projects have gone to um, different enrichment items for our bears. So we have a really big um, industrial ice machine. Um, so in the summer, we can give them like big piles of ice um, and put ice in their toys and that kind of stuff. Um, we also have a project coming soon, like an enrichment structure. So that will go in the grass exhibit. Um, it's gonna be, I think, big pillars that we can attach enrichment to, stuff like that. Um, it's also any research that we're doing. So um, funding, like I was talking about the, the blood that we're doing and analyzing that and supporting um, different scientists and stuff like that. And That's nutrition. great. And nutrition, of course. And maybe you can share those. Thing. Pardon that, pardon me? On um, the nutrition aspect, just with the polar bears, we have like a five year study going right now um, where we, they're on a very regimented diet. So um, just give you a quick overview that polar bears in the wild, they will naturally change the amount of food they were getting based on the sea ice. So when the sea ice is present, that's when they're getting all their calories because they're eating all the blubber from the seal. So they will actually increase um, up to 50% of their body weight during those winter months when they're hunting. Then during the time where the sea ice is naturally um, not there, they kind of go through a fasting period where they will live off of mostly their fat reserves and they will eat just like grass and berries and maybe some birds and eggs just to kind of sustain themselves. So here at the zoo, we have a whole nutrition study where we're trying to mimic that natural diet and our bears will go through that natural fluctuation in weight and change in diet. Um, and then from the research point of view, we, we look at their blood as well as their internal body temperature to, um, so we actually give them these little um, they're called eye buttons. They look like little batteries and we feed those to the bears and they measure their internal temperature as it goes through. And we compare that to the ambient temperature outside and just kind of shows that by feeding them the lower calories in the summer kind of lowers their metabolism and then actually lowers their um, body temperature as well. So it kind of helps them get through um, the warmer weather, which is what would happen in the wild when they do experience that natural summertime. So all the money goes towards towards funding those kind of projects. Amazing. And so with all of these different projects requiring all of this fundraising money, all of these fundraising dollars, maybe you can give us an update on where we are right now as we work towards that $25,000 goal. 
think we just breached 20,000. So we're hoping uh, to get to 25,000 this year. Amazing. And so that's a great update for our audience because, of course, all of you who are registered or even those looking just to contribute financially to these great projects, you can visit CanadaRunningSeries.com or TorontoZoo.com for more information about how to contribute. And we really want everyone to do the best they can to work towards that $25,000 goal because we are so close, which is great. And so to kick off the Move Your Paws for the Polar Bear Cause this Saturday, uh, February 27th, it is also International Polar Bear Day. So what is the goal of this worldwide initiative and how will the Toronto Zoo be celebrating International Polar Bear Day this year? Um, so this year we'll probably be doing lots of social media posts um, actually on um, International Polar Bear Day. We're also gonna be having a special Facebook Live at one o'clock. That's gonna be at our polar bear exhibit um, with one of the polar bear keepers and one of our polar bears as well. Um, we're also doing um, a auction that ends actually 9 p.m. on February 27th. And um, I guess we'll share the link with you guys, but there's lots of really amazing stuff that you can bid on. Uh, including some tours with a polar bear keeper. Um, there's a tour with our CEO. We also have some polar bear painting artwork that our bears themselves have painted. Um, there's some beautiful artwork that Hudson has some nice paw prints, and some of Juno as well. Um, we also have some local businesses that have donated items as well as um, um, some handmade stuff and uh, books. And there's even some bracelets that are really cool that each bracelet comes with a bear that you can actually track in the wild um, through Polar Bear International. Amazing. And I, I just have to go back for a second. You said the polar bears did some of this art themselves. Yep. So that's another training or enrichment session that we can do with them. So um, using the same kind of port that we use for their blood, they'll just kind of dip their paw in, um, in paint and uh, put it on. The canvas. There's one that um, I was calling it the hungry, hungry hippo painting. It's square and it has like Hudson's print like this, and we just kept turning it. And you can even see some claw marks from his nails. Um, but other times we just put the paint on the ground and they'll just walk across it. So we get some cool polar bear paw prints that way. Very cool. That's very exciting. And so how can folks uh, learn more about your silent auction? As, as you mentioned, we'll make sure that we do the best we can here at Canada Running Series to spread the link and the awareness. But um, how can people learn more about what, uh, what auction items they can bid on? Uh, so it's on Facebook and it's shared by um, our Toronto Zoo Facebook page. It's also kind of run by our um, Toronto Zoo AZA um, chapter. So that's a, a local chapter of zookeepers. Um, so it's actually on that page as well. Um, so you can Google or face, search on Facebook, Toronto AZA, AAZK, and um, you can find the link there. And just to find the pictures, you click on discussions, and then you'll see all the different items up for bid and how much they're going for. Great. And you said that that auction closes at 9 p.m. Is that correct? On Saturday, yep. February 27th, 9 p.m. Eastern That's time? Right. Yeah. Great. So in addition to being able to tune into your Facebook Live on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, of course, the zoo has been closed as a result of COVID-19 for so much of the last year. How can folks continue to engage in the zoo and visit not in person? Um, so if you're on Facebook, every day at 1 p.m. we have a Facebook Live. Um, we don't have a schedule because it's, it's kind of random where it's going to be. Um, so and you can go back on Facebook too and see older videos each day. They kind of live on the Facebook page. So there's some of the polar bears, um, gorillas and grizzly bears even when they were awake. So there's, you can go back and watch all the videos. Other thing you can do is check out our website, torontozoo.com and click on the zoo to you. There's lots of um, resources there, some paid and some that are free um, that you can virtually visit different areas and sign up to see a different area, those kind of things. And so that's a fantastic stand in and I, I'm sure this is difficult to answer, but do you have any sense of when the zoo might be reopening for us all to come and visit again in person? I wish I knew that. Um, currently, no, we're just kind of following directions from the government. Um, I guess March 6, I believe, we'll find out what color Toronto's in. Um, so hopefully we know more soon, but check out our website and all our other social media outlets, because I'm sure we'll be posting all of that once we know. 
Fantastic. Well, Amy, this has been great. And just as we wrap up, um, whether people are looking for motivation while they're logging their kilometers through this virtual event, or if they're just looking for ways to be more conscientious about polar bear conservation in their daily lives, what are a few final messages that you'd like to leave our audience with about how people can continue these efforts um, over the next month and beyond? Uh, well, there's lots of um, very easy, easy things that everyone can do to lower their carbon footprint at home that to collectively help um, with that sea ice melting. Um, there's obvious things, recycling, carpooling, reducing the water, wa reducing the amount of water and electricity used. Um, another great thing that people could do is limit their single use plastics. So there's lots of really awesome products out there now that you get reusable straws, coffee mugs, grocery bags, those kind of things. Another really easy thing that everyone can do at home is lower their thermostat just by two degrees and bundle up, wear a warmer sweater. Um, if collectively everybody did this, this would have a huge effect um, with climate change. Another thing that everyone could do is support accredited zoos like Toronto Zoo, because um, when paying for your admission here at the zoo, some of the money goes towards um, conservation and research and all that stuff, as well as looking after our bears. Mm, of course. Well, that's great, Amy. Thank you very much for all those suggestions. And again, as folks continue to look forward to the Move Your Paws for the Polar Bear Cause starting this Saturday, February 27th, they can think about all those takeaways. And again, if you are participating, um, keep in mind that we are I think less than $5,000 away from our $25,000 fundraising goal at the moment. Also keep in mind that you can continue sharing all of your photos and your journey along as you log those kilometers. Um, share them both through the Toronto Zoo and the Canada Running Series social media accounts. We love to see that. I know lots of years people have dressed up as polar bears or, or sort of channeled their inner polar bear. So we always love to see the creative ways that folks are engaging that way as well. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing so much about the polar bears. And we look forward to seeing you at uh, 1 p.m. on Saturday on International Polar Bear Day. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Again, uh, the Move Your Paws for the Polar Bear Cause virtual event is running February 27th to March 29th. This event is sold out, but whether or not you are participating, you can visit torontozoo.com to learn more about the Wildlife Conservancy and the exciting events coming up over the next month. And a final reminder that registration is now open for the Under Armour Spring Runoff, the Banque Scotia 21 km de Montréal, and the Scotiabank Vancouver Half Marathon Virtual Races. Head on over to CanadaRunningSeries.com to find out what you get with registering and to start your training today. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Runners High presented by Canada Running Series. My name is Kate Van Buskirk. You can join us again next Wednesday for another edition. In the meantime, run safe and healthy and we'll chat again soon.